Hi everyone, Kent Malmros here, Senior Director of Vault Training at Viva Systems. I'm once again joined by my good friend, Graham O'Keefe, founder and CEO of Learn About GMP. We've been having a really compelling set of conversations around the relationship between e-learning content, e-learning technologies, how life sciences companies should think about successfully uh, deciding on deploying and, and really implementing the right approach to those in concert. This is an important topic right now, Graham, because with the current state of the world and everyone being at home as a result of the pandemic, I think it's safe to say that e-learning has become even more pronounced uh, than it was previously. And it was, of course, already an important tool. Basically, everyone's doing exclusively asynchronous or synchronous online training. I think it's important that we leave our customers with some ideas about how to rapidly um, implement a digital learning program that can be effective with the state of the world. Do you have any ideas on that? Yeah, so what I can do is I can share maybe five steps that, that we take to help uh, companies who, who don't have an online approach currently in their training departments to get them to that point. So, I mean, there's five, five steps you can go through. So the first step will be, first of all, think about your overall learning strategy, okay? What are your uh, cap capability gaps even? Uh, what's the strategy to the business? And what are your short versus long-term goals, okay? That will help you define your strategy and also have a look at your, your quality management system, the SOPs that are coming out of that, and what courses need to be created on the back of that actually to align to the strategy. Once you figure out what that is, then you can concentrate on, on course development, you know, ensuring that you have access to SMEs on site, you can get them to create content for the courses you need to actually align with that strategy, okay? Get them on board, get them to develop content, ensure that it's second or third review, that it aligns with regulations and standards, et cetera, et cetera, and then go through the whole course creation process, okay? Um, the third step then would be to think about a micro-learning approach, okay? We spoke about that in a previous video. The micro-learning approach is also very, very important. It's very important because it, it increases knowledge retention. So you might do a 45 to 60 minute course maybe once a year, but what about you know retaining some of that information on a regular basis? So micro-learning, 45, 60 second videos is a great way to increase a knowledge retention. You can, you can deploy that then to critical business areas quickly. And it also has a higher impact sometimes than, than long form courses. And I think also, it's important to say right now in the current context, we all are struggling with Zoom fatigue, for example. Yeah. So adding micro learning assets keeps people engaged, right? Yeah, it's less time consuming and it's accessible to everybody quickly, you know? Um, so that's a really important point. So that's step three, okay? Ensure you have reinforcement with micro learning. Um, and then, you know, another aspect of this is, you know, once you're developing your overall, you know, online training strategy, ensure that you have a wing of your business that allows you to customize various aspects of the courses, okay? So you need to tailor those courses as well to suit your business, align with your own procedures, not only the regulations and standards, but also your own procedures. And that will allow you then, if you're a global company, for example, to harmonize globally training as well, and that's something maybe you can look at at a higher level, okay? So customization step four, that's another great aspect of, of creating this overall strategy. Um, and then step five, and I'll leave it at this, this is the final, final key step, and people often overlook this, and people don't even realize this is part of the overall, of the overall I suppose, rollout, is, is you need to define a kind of an internal marketing strategy. So it's all, it's all well and good creating these overall courses. You want to take a lot of time and effort to create courses, but how are you going to promote this training, okay? So promotion of training is, is really key as well. You want to get people excited about about doing training. Compliance training, regulatory training isn't that exciting. We all know that, but we have to try and make it as exciting as we can, you know, true compelling courses, but also, you know, having a, you know, a marketing strategy to align with that, you know, to make sure that people actually want to do it. And they actually know that the courses exist. So there might be courses that they don't have to do mandatory wise, but if you, if you let people know there's courses available that they can upskill on, you know, they're always interested in that. So, you know, just to recap on that. So there's five, five steps here, you know, define your learning strategy, Yep. Okay. Create the courses. Yep. Ensure you have reinforcement with micro learning. Have a customization wing, and also think about an overall marketing strategy. Yeah, I think those are five fantastic recommendations as a series of steps, um, and really reflect some of the same things that we would tell our customers when it comes to selecting an e-learning technology. I think without kind of emulating that or mirroring it. Yeah. Safe to say that really for your five steps to occur appropriately, you need to have a technology or a, a group of technologies 
that in a remote setting enable those things that make it easy to create your training matrix flexibly, to change it as you're figuring out your learning strategy. Because for an emerging pharma company, that's not the easiest thing to do. Um, building a, a series of libraries that are both macro and micro learning assets requires you to be comfortable with the, let's say, updating process and the ability to rapidly retrain on those things as needed. I love the suggestion of building a capability internally to author content. It's funny you say that because I think a lot of e-learning content providers, of course, try not to encourage that because they want to capture revenue, but you're really being responsible and saying to customers, look, I can't do everything for you. We're going to have a better relationship if you actually build this expertise. And I would argue the same thing. I hear people often say, well, do you have an authoring tool within the LMS? And I say, you don't want me to have an authoring tool within the LMS. There are great authoring tools on the market out there. Yeah. And if you go out and get one and build the expertise around it, you will be a better learning organization. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, kind of adding to that yeah. group of collaborative expertise. So great recommendations, Graham. Um, I think in this time, it's really important for organizations to take ownership, wouldn't you say, of their, of their learning program? Yeah, exactly. Like, and, you know, understand how it's going to move forward because we all know, like in current times, that this isn't going backwards. So you have to have that strategy going forwards because, you know, we can't always get to the classroom and with a dispersed workforce and people aren't always going to go back to the office anymore. You need to think about this now. Great. Yeah. Well, I think that's excellent advice. Graham, I really appreciate you joining me for Thanks, not only this video, but all of these chats that we've had around the relationship between uh, e-learning technologies and e-learning content. I'm sure we'll be talking again soon, but thanks for joining me. Thanks, Ken. Appreciate it.